Hello and welcome to Redesigning Subscriber Logos. I think this is episode five of this little series. Uh, let's jump straight into it. Right, let's open the message, revive chocolate email message. Hey, I'm Carson. I made this logo for a local chocolate company. The logo is made by modifying the font Bite Chocolate. The font sounds pretty relevant. Let's open it up, this Illustrator file, and see how we look. Cool, so we've got the word revive in this scripty font. I guess this is like an addition to the font, and I think on the end of the E, there's an addition there as well. And that makes this kind of like swell. And then we've got a cocoa bean on top of the eye in place of the dot that you would usually have on top of an eye. That's cool. And then we've also got this kind of like lozenge shape around it. Okay, so yeah, there's nothing really wrong with this logo. I think if I was using this as a starting point, what I might do to sort of like tidy up some areas of this logo, but I don't mean that it's messy already. I just mean this is just literally what I would do just to take it forward. Um, I might choose a font that's got a little bit more of like a loose feel, um, kind of give it a little bit more kind of energy. So I'm gonna have a quick look now and see what we can find. I don't know that much about the company, so I'm kind of just free freewheeling it here, but let's see what we can come up with. See, that looks too like childlike for me. These ones too look too much like they should be on an invitation or something like that. See, I quite like the look of that. And it's got that looser feel where as you can see, so you can see what I mean, if I pull a ruler down. This, it goes above the line, this goes above the line, then this is on the line, but it's by a lot more than this one. Um, kind of hard to explain, uh, but I just generally, just the style difference just looks more to my taste. So I'm just gonna use this as my starting point. So I'm not entirely sure whether this was intentional, but this is how I'm taking it. I'm taking it that this kind of shape that's coming off the end of the E and this coming off the R here is making sort of like a cocoa bean shape in here. So if I can sort of exaggerate that, I don't think it will be necessary to have the little cocoa bean on the top of the eye. So that's my plan and I'm gonna try and put it into action now. So I'm gonna start by outlining this, just removing all these points. Cool, yeah, and when I'm looking in here, I can see that there's kind of like a little kink in the line. It's really subtle, but when you zoom out, you can actually see it more kind of goes thinner there and then a little bit fatter. So when I'm working on my little version down here, I'm just gonna try and get that all absolutely pristine, perfect condition. So I want a line to kick out from here and end up next to this E, but like we've considered space in between there. So I want the gap between my two lines to be about the thickness of the stroke. But obviously because we're using a scripty font, the stroke thickness isn't completely linear. So let's just stop talking and get on with it. Right, we're getting super close now. Then I just need to fatten this end up. So what I'm going to do is press Shift and C and get this tool, whatever it's called, anchor point tool. And just click and drag on there. Oh, not that's awful. What's going on here? So I just need to swap around which way the handles were. The handle was coming off of this end and that was what was making it really difficult. So I just pressed on Shift and C to get this anchor point tool. Clicked on that just to delete the anchor, like the handle adjustment that I'd made and then just clicked and dragged over this side just to bring the handle, the handle from this side so it matches the bottom stroke. Oh, well, it matches the bottom line. I hope that makes sense. 
It's just a lot easier for me to get it matching up then. And then now, once I'm almost happy, I think I should be able to use the anchor point tool and grab that and just fatten it a little, just to sort of round it out like the end of that. Yep, yeah, that's almost good. And then for this here, I can just see a slight little kink in there, but I think I'll be able to get away with just using this rounded corners tool just to smooth that out. See that little rounded live corner thing pops up, that little circle with the circle in it. I think if I just pull that and then probably do the same on this side as well. I think that's smoothed it out enough and that's looking quite smooth and quite nice. So then now I'm just gonna grab this by just grabbing that that point there with the direct selection tool. Come on C, come on V, press O, shift and click and drag down to flip it. Make that kind of comfortably spaced, kind of equally spaced like that space in there, kind of achieve that here. Then I think we'll be winning and we'll be looking good. And if we can get it aligning as well, that's even better. kind of just want to focus on making it look right. So if you extended that line out and extended that line out, they'd cross over at the right place. Something like that maybe. And then I'm going to just hide the background of this under a white box, which we can sort out later. So bring this to the front. Okay, so I think this has given us almost exactly what I was looking for. Just moving that word in along a little E V I V E. Just going to scale that down. Also, I think I should be able to move that in. Cool. Okay, so I think that's looking quite like a cocoa bean idea. Um, now there's just one thing that I want to try and that is just fattening everything up with a little stroke, which is kind of a bit of a cheeky move, but I think we can get away with this. So maybe one point stroke, maybe even less than that. Just thinking if this was actually on like a chocolate bar, potentially that sort of size. I want this to kind of be thick enough that it can hold its own weight even down small. So maybe something like that. That might be a notch too far, but let's try duplicating it and try 0.5. You see, I think that's good now. Right, okay, that's what we're going with. So I don't waste too much time. Cool. And then, like I said, I don't think we need to worry about messing with the eye on the top or the dot on top of the eye. I think that looks good. So the next part of my plan is to put this onto an actual chocolate wrapper to see how that might work. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot to say, I don't feel like this outer lozenge shape is required. I think that logo is strong enough on its own. Without the outer shape, I think like that is, it doesn't really fit. This looks kind of very straight and geometric compared to this kind of scripty and loose logo. So I just feel like the two things don't match up. So actually what I could have done to save that 10 minutes that I just spent doing this, I could have just deleted that and that looks pretty good as well. So for the packaging design, I'm actually gonna move over to Illustrator. So what I'm gonna do is finalize this logo so I can use it both in full color and also in white. So I'm going to expand all of this. And then I'm going to, with the Shape Builder tool, just take away the bits that I don't want, which is these white areas that are hiding that bar behind there. And then everything else, I'm pretty sure I can just press Pathfinder and then now that is all one nice solid unit. So if I go into outline mode, you can see it's just one nice, one nice shape. And I'm gonna make a second version of that 
which is white out because the idea that I've got in my head for this chocolate bar design uses a white logo on top of like a brown background. So that's what we're gonna use. So from here, I'm just gonna go Command Alt and P, Edit Artboards, Custom, Fit to Selected Art. And I'm gonna highlight this one, Command Alt and P, Edit Artboards, click, drag to create a new artboard and then go Custom, Fit to Selected Art. And now page one of this Illustrator file is my like brown or black logo. Page two is my whiteout logo. Save that, open up, in design, have a drink while I'm waiting. Oh, Spill a bit. And when InDesign is loaded, I I'm going to create a new document that's 1100 by 400 pixels, and that's just because the mock-up that I'm going to use in a minute. Uh, that's like the size requirement. Obviously, I wouldn't normally work in pixels for a packaging design, but this is just for the purposes of this. 400 px, and notice that when I press shift, like I'm putting 400 px in there, even though I'm working in millimeters in InDesign. Then when I press, like when I type px after the number, and then press shift, it just automatically converts it. So that's well good. Create. And then the first thing I'm going to do is save this because it's just the right choice. And save it with a decent name. So even though my whole YouTube channel is about logo design, that is actually probably less than 5% of what I actually do like at, for my actual job, my actual graphic design job. My main like day-to-day -day work is mostly probably 80% in InDesign with a little bit of Photoshop and Illustrator just to kind of like feed into InDesign documents basically. And if you don't already know InDesign, I would advise you to learn it. It's not that hard. If you already know Illustrator, a lot of the tools and a lot of the like palettes and stuff, there's a lot of crossover. So it's pretty easy to learn and it's just, it makes so many things so much easier. Obviously it depends what you're working on. But for things like flyers, brochures, um, even web graphics and stuff I've started doing in InDesign just because it's so like versatile and adaptable. But anyway, this is redesigning subscriber logos and I'm already going off the boil by making packaging for a chocolate bar, but I just feel like this is, might be interesting. From here, I'm going to place my Illustrator file inside my InDesign file. So show import options. I'm going to go all just to bring both of them in. And then wherever I click, it'll bring page one, page two. Cool, now for the main meat of my packaging, basically the idea is we're gonna have like a chocolatey pattern, then we're gonna have a nice big word that says the flavor. So I wanna make something that's adaptable so that when they've got a different flavor or different product, we can change that word, but still looks cool and will stand out on the shelves. So the first thing I'm gonna need is a nice sort of chocolatey vibe background for the packaging. So I'm gonna go on the internet and then go on Unsplash, which is like this free library of images which you are allowed to use for commercial use. Um, but then saying that, watch out, because there was a bit of a like hoo-ha recently about um, people using pictures that had recognizable like people's faces in. Um, and saying that even though you're using it off Unsplash because it's got a recognizable person and you're kind of, it might be somehow endorsing your product or something like that. I'm not sure about the exact legalities of it, but yeah, just watch out if you're using any that have actual faces on. Well, uh, what is going on, on my internet? Cool, so I'm gonna type chocolate. I'm trying to find something that's not too intrusive. I just want this to be a nice background. So maybe I could actually just use one of them first ones, which is the guy's hands in the beans. So let's do that. I'm gonna put it in a links folder because that's the right thing to do. <coughs> and then show and finder, boom. Let's chuck that in. That looks better than just a brown background already. Just that little bit of texture and that little bit of kind of movement in the color just actually like immediately makes it look better than just using a solid color uh, for the style I'm going for. 
So I'm just trying to think what color or what flavor we should make this chocolate. So you've got your layers palette in InDesign as well. So I'm going to call it background or BG because you know, time saving and all that. Call this page artwork or this layer artwork. Oh, grab them two, lock that one, slam them back in place. Bring our logo into here. So I'm thinking that like a chocolate bar company wouldn't normally have their own logo as the biggest thing on the packaging. Like say Cadbury's for example, they wouldn't have like the Cadbury's logo as the largest thing. They would have like the name of the actual bar or like at least the flavor or something like that, just, just bigger. And then use their logo like subtly on there just to sort of like hold, hold the brand there. So let's have a little look at the mock-up that we're gonna use and see where we can position this logo for the best visibility, but without being too dominant. That's cool. So you see, we've got these bits here that are gonna be kind of like, kind of intruded on because they will be like folded over. So I wanna try and get it in this main bit here. So right, let's, I need some sort of guide. So I reckon that's about to there, something like that. So I'm going to keep that as my clear zone and then bring everything else in. I'm actually going to change my margin so that I've got something to work with. This is the other good thing about InDesign is that you, you've got your perfect margins here, which I don't seem to know how to set up in Illustrator to be as good as this. So right, if we say 60, and as adaptable as this, I just don't think Illustrator is meant for it, whereas this is exactly what InDesign is meant for, so it just helps me get my grid in place, which helps make the designs look clean and nice, just how we like it. 20, 20, we probably don't need four columns, we'll go three columns, yeah. So we go revive, top left, tap that there. And I think if we say the flavor we're gonna choose for this is gonna be mint and we'll call it like mint, cool mint. That sounds like chewing gum. Maybe like mint's quite like hard hitting. So maybe like minty, minty kick. So let's just, let's just do it. I'm not gonna think of it too much. Right, because their logo is like scripty, I'm going to use something that's like completely the opposite just to give it a bit of contrast. Don't really want to just make everything scripty because scripty can be quite hard to read and also like just too much of a good thing. It's like just just gets boring. So let's go something like Poppins, right? I hate that minty green. So I need to just steal one because I've got I can't make it myself. Yeah, this is good. So can I just use the eyedropper from here? No, I'm gonna have to pull that in. Oh, it's all going wrong. Yeah, that's the one. Copy image. Paste. Eyedropper. Oh, come on. Drag that into my swatches. Perfect mint green. Right, I actually think it would be more interesting <clears throat> if the word kick, well, what the hell's going on with that kerning? What? What is that about? Oh, I'll put a space there, that's what it's about. <laughs> if right okay so let's be a little bit more bold with this i think we'll have the k going from behind the actual logo itself and then we'll just sort that word minty out in a minute actually no 
to get this looking and toyed. Right, that's looking quite cool. So now what I want to do is just make this logo cut over the front of the K. So I'm just going to follow the contour of that like that just so it gives the illusion that it's cutting it out but all we're really doing is copying that background picture so in InDesign you kind of use the white arrow to grab the what like inside the contents and then you use the black arrow to grab like the box and then the white arrow to grab what's inside the box <clears throat> sorry I didn't make that very clear right so I'm going to copy that lock that layer press V for the black arrow click on this little shape that I just made and then paste in place no not paste in place paste into which is command alt and V bang then bring this to the front using whatever the shortcut is I think that's looking pretty good and this is like a nice and developable way of showing the name of the chocolate bar I think because say you have one that's called I don't know berry boost or something you can do a similar thing here where you put the have the logos kind of cutting over this part here okay and so before I go any further I want to try this out in the mock-up just to make sure that I haven't missed anything or overlooked anything on the sides so let's make a JPEG of this I'm just gonna put it in a thing called mock-ups and then you can do a JPEG straight out of InDesign, just export that, which is really cool. Because I know that my pixel size is already right, I'm just going to do it at 72 DPI, all pages, because we've only got one page anyway. Um, and I'm not going to worry about any of that, so yep, we're good. Close that down, place it, upload image. Yep, we already know it's exactly the right size. Right, so as you can see, I haven't factored in like the wrap around on the top and bottom of the chocolate bar. But what I can tell from this is that this text is looking nice and big and clear. And I think that would definitely stand out and look quite modern on, on the shelves. So if we say that the bottom of the K at the moment is kind of our limit. We want to, that's like the visible limit from the front and the top of the logo here so we weren't too far off to be honest anyway so we're all right so top we we'll go 25 25 and funnily enough that was actually what it was on already so that's actually kind of annoying but oh well right I need to think about this I need to grab the actual paths and move that otherwise I'll be moving the image as well and it won't line up with the background image Just want that to come up and that to come up. Just going to lock that, and we're not in Illustrator, we're in InDesign, so it's Apple L for lock. And because that picture is inside this box here, I can move this around and it will just give me more image, which is cool for what I want. Cool, so that is looking pretty good now. I think couple more things just to make it look a little bit more realistic is let me just the first thing I'm thinking of is like the like the weight and then maybe just a little description of what the bar is let's have a look see how other people do it oh here you guys this is a good example actually so Cadbury is our equivalent of revive here and then dairy milk is our equivalent of minty kick so you see they've got like a nice little um, like graphic in there as well, so maybe we can play with that. And also the calories thing, that's what's missing. So I wonder if I can just grab like a calories on packaging. I wonder if there's one that I'm allowed to just steal without going straight to prison. Nope. Okay, right. Let's not worry about that. Right, so let's make this a different version of pop-ins just so it's a little bit thinner, so it's not looking so uncomfortable with the rest of that text. I kind of like that extra light, actually. And 
And then maybe I can make it bigger instead of bolder. And also a little bit bolder. I want it to get washed away. Maybe just normal light, pop in this light regular. Yeah, that's cool. I just want to realign this. Now, do you know what? I'm not going to move that down because it's getting too close to the sea. I'm going to outline that. And then this is a good example, if you're not using InDesign already, of how quite like Illustrator it can be, if you want it to be. Right now, I've outlined that text, and in the same way that you do in Illustrator, I can now just move that. Like, so you can actually do like the point level adjustments as well. No messing around. Right, I think that's cool. Now, I don't think I'm going to go into the great details of the calories and everything. I think I'm just going to say how many grams do you reckon that chocolate bar is? I don't know, 60? Just put that in. Medium, regular, and that would probably be pretty small really. Maybe like half the size of like feature text or maybe not half, but something like that. And that probably would normally be white because it's kind of like standard standard text rather than anything too brutal. Right, my viewport's lagging a little bit because this computer's about 10 years old, so I'm going to go view, uh, display performance typical, and that'll make it look a little bit crappy, but I just need to be able to work quicker. Right, okay, that's cool. Now I'm just going to try one more thing and see if we can add some sort of like minty graphic here. Basically because I saw that uh, Cadbury's one and they're like the leaders of chocolate probably in the UK. I don't know about the rest of the world but they're like the ones to follow. So let's just like steal like an artist and see if we can do something similar. So mint, what does mint look like? Oh yeah, them leaves. Right, that looks more like mint. Right, let's download that one and see what we can do. I might get away with just like fading it onto the end, just so kind of on the shelf, you get a snapshot that it is mint, like without obviously reading it. Because at the moment, at a glimpse, it is brown packaging with green writing, so it kind of hints that it's mint, but I'm just thinking a little bit more visual, like a visual clue will probably help. So let's see what we can do. Scale that down. Could actually be on both ends of the like wrapper. Could be like minty, might be quite cool. I'm gonna try fading this. Sometimes this looks proper crap, but let's have a look. Hmm. I think that white is killing it. It's not too bad. Let's chuck it on the other end as well and see how we look. And if nothing else, even if this isn't the greatest mint design packaging at least you're getting a little bit of an idea of what you can do in InDesign as well because my whole channel recent no my whole channel up until now has just literally been illustrator almost on everything maybe the odd mock-up in photoshop but nothing nothing in InDesign right so i'm just exporting another jpeg and we're going to try that in our mock-up upload image Oh yeah, it looks better. Right, I need to change that background because it's awful. Like... That's too much, just grey, just neutral, come on. Yeah. Right, cool, I think that's looking a lot better now. 
I think if anything, the Revive logo is a little bit too big. So right, let's, let's address this. Unlock that, because I locked it earlier. I'm gonna get rid of our little background for now. Just scale that down. Basically, I feel like we're losing too much of this K here. So I just want to shrink that logo down, bring it in a little, so it's not quite so intrusive on the actual lettering. And we're gonna redraw our shape here. Which yeah, could be quite nice if it goes perfectly through the end of the K. Lock that one, unlock the background, grab that image, lock that, grab our line, paste it in place. No, not paste in place, place it in two. And then bring our logo to the front. And then just for peace of mind, I'll look at it in high quality display. Right, I think we're looking quite cool. I think if anything, now we've got these green leaves in, it's making this text look a little weak. So I'm just gonna boost that up a little. And a more green and more blue, it's weird. So yeah, let's make one more JPEG of that. Place it in our mock up. So if I just log in as myself and then I can download this graphic and have a good look at how it looks. Right, okay, so I know this is redesigning subscriber logos, but for this one, I got a little bit carried away. I took the logo, I used a more loose and like more scripty font. Um, used a lot of the same ideas as the original logo, which is the swoop along the bottom and the top. Dropped the cocoa bean idea from the top of the eye as I kind of thought that the whole logo kind of represents a cocoa bean in its new shape anyway. And I dropped the lozenge around the logo as well just as I felt that was unnecessary and it kind of jarred with the like scripty loose feel of the text. And then from there, uh, we moved into InDesign and created this packaging. And by using some contrasting text instead of another scripty font, we've kind of made something that's very easy to read. Revive is sitting there. It's clear that it's kind of like the name of the company rather than the name of the product, which is it's sitting there doing its place. So I think it's working in situ. And also hope this has given you a little bit of an insight as to how good InDesign is for just whipping up some little artwork like this um, and how useful it can be on other projects. And then maybe if you enjoy seeing some InDesign process as well, I'll start making more videos about that as I find that quite interesting. And to be honest, I'm probably better in InDesign than I am in Illustrator anyway. So uh, who knows? Yeah, just let me know in the comments. Cheers.